Heavenly Father, our Savior, Son, and Holy Spirit, we come together in this present moment to listen to Tara and to send her our mutual love and support, letting her know she is so precious to all that she touches, that she prays for, that she supports. And we thank you for blessing us with her presence here now at this moment in time as we dedicate our mind, body, and spirits to listening to hearing your word through Tara. And we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Well, it's, it's great to be here. And thank you for asking me to share my story. Um, I would say my story is all about leaning into God's love and a revelation of God's love and God's power. Um, and I say that because that was my greatest need is I felt, I didn't know I had so many unmet love needs growing up, but that is, you know, now I can look back and say that that's been one of my biggest inner healing and biggest encounters with God has been the revelation of his personal love for me and that I could personally love God back. Um, when I was in college, I um, was in a season of my life where I was questioning my faith or I had questioned my faith. I should say I was back in a place where I wanted to rebuild my faith in God. I was raised in the church um, but I had questioned whether I was fully believing if I had made God my own personal God or not, or whether I was just inheriting the faith of my family and walking with the Lord had certainly kept me safe and provided me with, uh, perfection, protection and provision, but I, I was lacking the love I needed in, in lots of different ways. And so I think I was thinking about this, like what was really the temptation? The temptation I think was that there might be something better apart from God. This was when I was in high school and because I wasn't experiencing all that I needed. Um, but it turned out that by the time I got to college a few years later, I I really, um, I figured, well, I learned that God's ways really do work and they are the best ways for me, <laughs> but I wanted to take the time to rebuild that faith. And I remember the first really powerful dream I had, um, was that I thought it was first a nightmare, but I had a dream where there was writing on my palms and it was writing was coming from the inside out. And when the, the writing kind of was being etched from the inside out of my hands, um, and they, it kind of scarred over, I could read what it said and it said, love Jesus. And at first I, th I thought it was a nightmare until I pondered it. And I was like, what does this mean? <laughs> um, but then I realized the next day, as I was walking on campus, I remember looking up like through the leaves and the trees at the sky and the blue sky shining. And I realized like, I'm meant to love Jesus, like inside my soul, my spirit belonged to Jesus. And I really felt like my insides were trying to get a message to the outside. Like um, from the inside out, the message was love Jesus. And, and that really um, started to change the course of my life again, because I was starting to kind of put back my faith in God. I already had realized there has to be more than this earth and world than just um, kind of the Epicurean existential experience. And it wouldn't be enough for me to get out of bed if there wasn't more than what I could see or know. So I realized there has to be God. And then um, 
in college, there was this craze about going to psychics and things like that. And I tried it once and this person really did seem to know things from the past that I thought, if I'm going to believe there's anything, any kind of spirit, then I'm going to definitely believe in the Holy Spirit. And so I kind of put all that stuff aside and said, there's got it. I do believe in the Holy Spirit. But the last part was about Jesus. Like, who do you say that I am? And that was when I had this dream about loving Jesus. And then I um, was invited, my sister, my twin sister invited me to come to a Bible study. And I hadn't been in a Bible study for probably four or five years. And when I went on campus to this Bible study, it was like coming home. I realized I knew all of this. Um, I've been brought up in the church and VBS and um, Sunday schools, and it just felt like coming home. So that was start. That really was how I started to come back to Christ. But I was really leaning into like, what does it mean to love Jesus? I, I knew God loved me, but I don't think I understood about the love relationship that was possible. And so I went to Zimbabwe uh, my junior year abroad, and I was praying for a Christian friend. So I was following along on my faith enough to want a Christian friend. And the second day into the program, um, a girl came in and she had, I could just see this like bright light over her. And I'm like, she's the girl I've been waiting for. And she did turn out to be um, a pivotal person in my faith journey. Mm -hmm. And um, we were partnered together in like a group of four. So she lived in the same neighborhood where I was in my homestay in Zimbabwe. And every day we would meet in the morning to walk to our school and she said, I have a love letter from the Lord for you. And I would say, what's a love letter of the Lord? Like, I had never heard that phrase before, but they were scripture verses. They were promises. And every day those scriptures would speak to my heart. And one day that love letter of the Lord, um, it said, it was a quote from second Corinthians, I think 20 verse five. And it was like, um, Today is a day of salvation. Like, you know, I have heard you when you called out to me. I have saved you when you needed me. Um, today is the day of your salvation. Today is a day of favor. Like this day you must choose. And I, I just felt like God was reading my personal mail. Like he knows I've been on the fence. I've been on the run, running from his love. And that's the day I really committed my life to Christ um, as an adult. And, and she was also really spirit filled. She was Episcopalian, but her parents had been missionaries in Africa and um, she had been exposed to the full gifts of the spirit. So she taught all about the gifts of the spirit, the full inheritance of the, um, as being a child of God. So I at once understood this love relationship as being a child of God the bride of Christ, but also that it came with power. And I think I, I needed that spiritual power in my life so desperately. And um, that there were angels I could call upon whenever I needed and spiritual gifts. And I was exposed to um, all night prayer meetings in Africa and people aren't on the fence. Those who I met in Zimbabwe, there were no lukewarm Christians there. They were on fire and they spoke in tongues and they had been saved from spiritual occult backgrounds and had magnificent stories of the power encounters of God. And, and I experienced it all. And um, I am a dreamer. That's how God speaks to me. And so shortly after I had this dream where um, I saw the Lord leading us into like a, a room with kind of a golden hue and um, a picture of this, of a church with a pastor. And it turned out to be a prophetic dream because um, it was there that I, I was in an all night prayer session, which was, I think the, the room it had this golden hue. And that's when I first got exposed to the gift of tongues. And I didn't know what it was at all. And I was a little bit like hostile and I'm not really a hostile kind of a person, but my friend fortunately explained what the gifts of tongues were. And she sang in a beautiful song in tongues and she's so loving and sweet that I was like, okay. So I said, Lord, if you have any gifts that you want to give me, and she explained about the spiritual gifts, I officially, 
you know, I'm open to whatever you want to give me. And um, it was shortly afterwards that I was in another church and I was praying a scripture verse in Ephesians about um, someone just to know well, someone in the group that I was really feeling like called to pray for that they would know the height and breadth and depth of the Lord from that passage. And I was praying so fervently and under my breath that I all of a sudden started speaking in tongues. And so that was really exciting and unexpected, but it happened in a, in a beautiful way, just an outpouring of my love for this person to experience what I had experienced. And um, the pastor there who ended up being the pastor in my dream said to me, um, now that you have this new spirit filled life, he said, I want you to always remember to will the will of God and to renew your mind with the reading of the word. And so those have been, been like two um, kind of railways that I keep me um, praying um, the mind of Christ and to stay in the scriptures. And I think, and, and our experience in Zimbabwe was like being in the book of Acts where sometimes we were in real mortal danger. Um, and I had to say, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And people would, who were coming after us would just stop in their tracks or people would show up out of the blue at our homestay saying, I heard that, you know, Jesus and we'd be praying for them. And um, so I, I saw lots of signs and wonders and it was exposed to the fullness of the kingdom. And so I came back to college, very changed. Um, I think God did that. So I couldn't slip back into my old ways. And I rededicated myself to Christ while I was there. I remember um, feeling like I needed God to just touch me in every place I couldn't even see. And my friend um, said she was Episcopal. She's like, well, typically a pastor or a priest does this. And I've been baptized as a child, but she said, I can pray over this water at this pool and, um, and you can just dive in and let this be like renewal of your baptism, you know, and that's kind of what I did, like a believer's baptism. I remember I was on a, a run and I just came back saying, I just want Jesus to touch me everywhere inside and out. And she, so I just dove in with my running clothes on into this pool after she prayed over the water. And I remember just coming up, just feeling just brand new. And I can still see that image in my mind. Um, so that was in 1991. Um, and I remember being afraid to turn an adult officially. I didn't feel ready. But by the time um, my birthday came while I was on that um, semester abroad, I had all this had happened in, in me spiritually that I knew I was ready to be an adult because I had become a woman of God. And I could trust myself with myself because I was entrusting myself to the Lord. Um, so that I think, um, I'd see, I feel like I, I replicate that, which was sewn into me. And so what was sewn into me was this love, um, uh, passionate love. I fell in love with Jesus and the power of the Holy spirit were both, um, invested in me. And I feel like that's what my ministry replicates. And that's what I am passionate about is having people, um, become aware and embrace their identities as beloved children of God and to live into their full inheritance in the kingdom of God and all that that is for them. Um, and I feel like that's that's the charism that, that comes with me when um, I'm now an Episcopal priest. Um, I was ordained in 2019. And I feel like most of my sermons have a lot to do with the message of God's love um, calling forth the scriptures and the power of God and, and encounter. I try to make my, my sermons and my preaching time to be um, encounter times where I leave space for encountering the living God. And I've been married, um, after that time in Zimbabwe, when I was, I had turned, I was 20 turning 21, my life, as I said, following God's a great adventure. My life just took off. Um, in 10 years, I had met and married my husband, which was a miracle story in and of itself, another God like moment, um, and ended up having three children. Um, I'm a, I became a clergy spouse. Um, my life just took off like within um, even three years of that moment. Um, and I and God was God was faithful as I rededicated myself to him in every way. Um, 
he, as you say, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all things will be added to you. So I've been married almost 30 years now. I have three grown children. And um, my husband and I have always been um, part of the renewal movement um, of the church, even um, as we're in the Episcopal Church in the United States. Um, he went to a seminary that was in renewal, Trinity School for Ministry. And I met him at a, a retreat, actually, in Long Island. I was 20 two going on 23 but i i was saying lord i i realize now i'm a subset of christians in the sense that i've got this spiritual gifts and understand that not all christians were comfortable with so i was like lord i'm praying for a man my age who's passionate for you who has integrity in his faith who's spirit filled who um i remember praying could be uh, a man who would be respected at the gates, like the, the Old Testament passages, the elders at a gate. And so lo and behold, I went on this retreat, renewal in Christ retreat, which was also an Episcopal renewal retreat. And there weren't very many young people, but my husband, Joe, was there, who was also just had turned 23. And he was he was that spiritual prayer partner that I, I really longed for and needed. And, and God has used us as prayer partners ever since. So I've been faithfully right by his side, um, in ministry and, um, operating in the gifts of the spirit where we can sometimes in churches where that was not the forefront of their understanding of the Christian faith. So we were in the back rooms and side places. Um, but, um, until God really spoke to me in 2019 and said, Tara, one of your gifts is getting everyone where they need to be but he's like, I have more for you. I have want to get you where you need to be. And he said, you're going to need to stop everything you're doing and listen to me and pray. And so I was very active in the healing prayer ministries and putting on all kinds of programmings at my husband's church in Connecticut, but it was his time for his sabbatical. And so it worked for me also that I took the sabbatical. And in that time, God did some deeper inner healing with me. But then I had the sense I was supposed to um, go to seminary. And I kept getting this word and people were saying it over me. You have a regional mothering call. And at, at that time, I was like, what does that mean? Um, what a regional mothering call? Like, what doesn't a mother do? Mothers do everything. So what's the call to be a mother um, and over a region? And it didn't even dawn on me that there was an ecclesiastical call at that time. Now, of course, I'm like, duh, you know, but um, but I knew, I sense I was supposed to go to seminary, but the question was why, and I didn't know why. But um, my husband and I were leading a retreat, uh, one of the alpha programs, and we had the Holy Spirit weekend, and um, someone had a very strong manifestation and deliverance at that time. And I wanted to reach out to Father Gary, who, was who led the retreat where Joe and I first met. And since I had some miracle healings happen at these retreats, and I knew you always had some good explanations for how to explain the gifts of the spirit to others. And I ha we had lost touch with him, but I found him and he was like, oh my goodness, my long lost children. And it was amazing. And so we reconnected and I told him, I need some advice. Do you have those things that you used to have to help explain the spiritual gifts? And he said, you know, so we reconnected. He said, we're doing our mission in Netherland coming up as soon. Would you and Joe be on the team? And I said, so he said, sure. So while I was in the Netherlands, um, right as I was sensing this call to go to seminary, I didn't speak Dutch, but people in my group, fortunately, the Dutch also spoke English very well. They didn't know me at all, but when, we just did a lot of praying over each other without a lot of explaining we just kind of wanted to hear from god for each other and the things they said over me affirmed so much of what god was showing me um that i was god approved which was like a doubt i had had and um that god was giving me whatever was in my heart and what i truly desired he was going to make happen which i was like what is that lord i wonder what i kind of knew but there were some other things um someone said i see you um like jumping out of an airplane and out of faith, which was an image God had given me before of like jumping out of an airplane, which I would never do and still don't think I would do, but yet I'm seeing myself taking the leap. Um, um, so it was a lot of affirmation. 
that God was calling me and that, and then people spoke over Joe and were saying things like, um, it's a, you'll be in a season where you'll be called to support Tara, which was affirming to him and kind of encouraging because we were really rocking the boat. I had been this steady clergy spouse, stay at home mom and wife for 20 some years. And all of a sudden I'm going to be going out um, but what really happened was when um, Father Gary had since um, his wife, who we knew also got ordained as an Episcopal priest. And during the healing prayer Eucharist, he had fallen sick. And so Judith, Mother Judith was um, called to lead the healing prayer Eucharist. And as she was doing the Eucharist and praying over people and the spirit just moving on her, I just felt like God put a spotlight on her and said, that's what I'm talking about. This is what I'm calling you to. And I was like, oh, I didn't think about that, that you're calling me to be ordained. But that's, that's what, and then, you know, sometimes you just open door or poke on a door and it just opens and that's what happens. So once I said, Joe, I think God's calling me to be ordained. We called the um, diocese um, uh, formation dean and met with them and just the doors opened and opened and opened. So that's, um, so something happened um, right after I met Joe at that retreat um, in 1993. Um Aside from meeting Joe, who after we met and married in 10 months, what, there were a handful of seminarians at this retreat. And the priest said, I'd like all seminarians to go forward. And um, then he said, I'd like everyone else to come forward to the altar who feels called to something they don't fight, feel equipped for, but you want the anointing for it. So I felt the Holy Spirit saying, go forward. And I was like, why? Like, there are seminarians. I'm just a lay person. But God said, go. So I went and knelt down next to Joe and I sense God calling me to be his partner in ministry. But I can see now connecting the dots that I also was called into um, priesthood at the time. But it just took 20 years to kind of manifest in um, in real time. Um, and interesting enough, before um, when I was in college, my senior year, I was praying and I had started going to a spiritual church and I heard the word minister and I had only gone to like Protestant, like, like kind of congregational and non-denominational kind of churches. Um, so I wouldn't have gotten priest, but I heard the word minister. I remember praying. I said, Lord, do you want me to be one or am I going to marry one? And I sense the Holy Spirit saying both. Um, and then, you know, less than a year later, I met Joe and married him. So I like, in a sense, met married a priest and minister, but I also was doing ministry as a clergy spouse. So I, I I'd always thought that was all like, I, okay, I did, I'm doing what you called me to do, but there was more. Um, so since I've been ordained um, almost simultaneously, when I got ordained to be a priest in 2020, I also got commissioned in OSL to kind of start co-leading my ministries in um, New York city. I mean, in, uh, in Connecticut, and um, with Father Don and in the region one, and I've been, then I start, then the pandemic happened. So I started the online communities and become a chaplain and convener. Um, but I had, um, but the way God tends to use me a lot is, is in the inner healing prayer and freedom prayers to unbound and, and deliverance ministry. So again, like, as you know, some of these things just kind of come to you, like, how does, what is presented and what do people need? And and often the people who come to me need an encounter of God's love. They need freedom from the bondage in which they found themselves in. So I, re I have received a lot of deliverance and inner healing and freedom prayer over the years. And again, I think what God sows into you is what we give out. And so um, that is how God uses me often. And um I'm still leaning into lots of spiritual gifts. Um, last year, I felt God really saying, keep developing your word knowledge. So I'm leaning into that more and more. But God has always seemed to give me like a prophetic, either dreams or words, which you don't know they are until they show up. And then you're like, oh, God, I guess that was you. <laughs> so um, it's it's a lifelong relationship and journey. And, and that's where I am today. So I, I serve in a church now as a, I'm, um, 
contracted part-time, although it's never really a part-time job, um, but it keeps me busy and um, I do a lot with OSL online and locally with different prayer appointments. So hope that's enough of my story.